Amid an ongoing pandemic and a near-empty stadium, the Olympic Games get underway in Tokyo. Hello, I'm Arnold Maidu and this is The Heat. Olympic organizers reported their largest single-day total of COVID-19 cases on Friday, just as the Games were set to officially begin. Tokyo organizers announced 19 new cases, including three athletes and three residents of the Olympic Village, bringing the total number to 106. Inside the main stadium, the pageantry of the opening ceremony continued an Olympic tradition, only this time the seats were largely empty out of caution and concern over the ongoing pandemic. For more, we turn now to Adam Hunt in Tokyo. So Adam, give us a sense of what the atmosphere is like in and around the city and the Olympics. Well, this is certainly a city on the edge, Anand. You mentioned the rising number of cases within the Olympic bubble. So that's the athletes, the coaches, delegates, everyone to do with the Olympics here in uh, Tokyo. And that has risen over 100 for the first time uh, since recording began on July the 1st and everyone started to arrive here uh, in the Japanese capital for the Olympics. But I think it's the cases outside the bubble, amongst the general population here in Tokyo that is really causing the worry and the unrest and all of the protests that we've seen over the last couple of weeks uh, here in Japan. Uh, almost 1,400 new cases were recorded in the last 24 hours, uh, which is the highest number we've seen uh, since way back in January, almost six months it's taken to get up to those kind of figures. We had almost 2,000 the day before as well. So that's worrying numbers. And just to give you a sense of what that rise actually means, that's over 150% compared to where we were a week ago. We saw protests, as I said, throughout the day uh, yesterday, a huge one at a government building not too far away from here. And then during the opening ceremony, it was bizarre. You could see the fireworks blasting into the sky, but also from the street below, you could hear protests, people shouting no to the Olympics, huge gatherings along the street, and the police were having to keep everyone uh, calm and making sure it didn't get uh, out of hand. So there is a lot of negative feeling from locals here towards the Olympics, but you can contrast that with the feelings we saw during the opening ceremony, the delight on the faces of so many athletes, given what they've been through, the solitary training, working so hard during the pandemic just to get here to Tokyo and compete for their nation. So I think it's one of those things where we've got contrasting emotions inside the Olympic bubble and then outside in the general population. Adam, there was a recent interview with the Japanese Prime Minister Yoshida Suga, and he admitted that it's been difficult to convince the Japanese people to support the Games. In fact, recent polls showed that up to 70% of the public preferred they be postponed or cancelled. What's driving that? Yeah, and those numbers you mentioned there, around 60-70% of people opposing the Olympics is exactly what we've seen here with all of those protests over the last uh, couple of weeks. That is certainly true from what we've seen on the ground. I think it's a combination of two things that is causing all of the unrest. The rising cases, both within the bubble and outside of the bubble, and I think the locals are really worried that some of those cases uh, within the Olympic bubble, although the numbers are relatively low and it's what the organizers say they were expecting, perhaps even lower than they thought they might see, they're worried that one of those cases might spread outside and then there's the feeling that the Olympics has brought more COVID here to Tokyo. Another issue is the low vaccination rates in Japan. Only about 20% of people here have had two doses, the full course of the vaccine, which is very low compared to other similar countries around the world. So those two combined issues is causing uh, all of this unrest. Will the Olympics be cancelled? I think the answer now that the opening ceremony is through and, and many of the events have already started, we've had three days of competition so far, I don't think the Olympics are going to be cancelled now. But I think organisers are going to have to balance two things. They're going to have to balance trying to show Japan off and Tokyo off uh, to the rest of the world and hope the Olympics shows all of that sporting glory that we see uh, every four or so years uh, at the Olympics, but also balance that with the ill feeling towards the event from locals here in Japan. Thanks, Adam. That's Adam Hunt reporting from Tokyo. Well, there is much to talk about. Let's get to our panel. Yoshikazo Kato is a research fellow at the Rakuten Securities Economic Research Institute in Tokyo. Lisa Delpi Neurotti heads the MS Sport Management Program at George Washington University. Also with us is Ina Tangen. He's a political and economic affairs commentator. And Dick Pound is a former Olympian and vice president of the International Olympic Committee. He joins us from Tokyo. 
Thank you, everyone, for being with us. And Dick Pan, let me start with you. You know, as, uh, as I mentioned, um, the Japanese public uh, are not very supportive of the Olympic Games uh, going on. Up to 70% of those surveyed want them postponed or cancelled. And then we add to that the fact that Tokyo has just seen a six-month high in COVID. The Japanese economy is not doing very well. So given all those factors, uh, give us a rationale for these games. Why should they go ahead right now? Couldn't they wait? Well, they, they certainly can't wait. Um, the, when the, the initial decision was made to postpone as opposed to cancel, uh, in the discussions we had with the Japanese organizers, they said, look, we'll, we can keep this ball in the air for a year, but, but no longer than that. And, uh, you know, we've got six months from now, we've got games in, in Beijing, and then you know, you're into the, uh, the 2024 Paris cycle. So it's now or never. Uh, I think we made the right decision to postpone. Uh, it, it certainly was not going to happen in, in 2020. And all of the measures that have been taken to isolate uh, and, and to create the bubbles uh, seem to be working. Uh, I mean, the, the great majority of, of cases in and around the village uh, are not from foreigners. They're from, from uh, Japanese uh, Tokyo uh, workers and, and uh, others. So you, you don't have a whole bunch of, of Olympians uh, out there coughing all over the, the general population. They're staying in the bubble. Uh, they're focused on what they want to do. And uh, I don't think that's going to add to uh, the concerns about a, a, a super spreader event. So, Dick, uh, we've had some events that have already started. Uh, we've had the opening ceremony. And from what you've seen, you're satisfied that this is going according to plan. This, this, this is the plan. I mean, the, you know, the bubble has <laughs> internal bubbles as well. If they find somebody that, that has suspicious syndromes uh, or symptoms, rather, and uh, COVID indications, there's a further isolation uh, that goes into effect right away, followed by tracing to make sure that uh, people with whom that person uh, may have been in close contact uh, are, are also tested to make sure that uh, nothing has happened. So. In that sense, you have to acknowledge that nothing in the world is totally risk-free. But what we've uh, done and what the Japanese organizers have done is, is to minimize uh, the risks of going ahead. And I think that the best decision in the circumstances is to go ahead, and that's what we've done. Yoshikazu Kato, uh, these games are being held in Japan under a state of emergency or quasi-state of emergency, uh, but there have already been uh, some consequences with the games being postponed with the uncertainty over COVID. Uh, Toyota, the big motor manufacturer, has withdrawn advertisements. Uh, we've also had another big company in Japan, Suntory Holdings. Uh, their CEO, it's a potential, was a potential sponsor of the, ga of the games, and their CEO, Suntory Holdings CEO, has been talking about it. Let's listen to what he had to say. We had a plan to open uh, uh, more than a couple of uh, bars and restaurants only for our products uh, sponsored by us, but uh, we canceled it. Do you think that these games could still boost international businesses for Japanese companies? More and more, I don't think so. I think uh, the Olympics have been losing its value. Do you think the games should have been postponed? Considering the uh, current rollout of vaccines in this country, two months from now should be the ideal timing. So Yoshikazu Kato, what do you make of that? I mean, what kind of impact will these games have uh, on the Japanese economy? Uh, obviously, you know, the, the, the impact of the Japanese economy, I mean, because, because this is uh, the Olympics under the state of emergency, and actually Japanese citizens are, you know, we are feeling collectively, you know, sacrificed, or, you know, and how could we engage in, in the Olympics? So, obviously, uh, you know, the Japanese economy is losing a lot because of the state of emergency rather than Olympics. So, you know, the Japanese people say, uh, the Japanese government, we are incorporate. Uh, with the government decision and help holding Olympics game, but you know what are what you can do for us. So you know, I think in terms of you know, domestic consumption, uh, this is the biggest uh, uncertainty for future Japanese economy. Um, but you know, the people are.
feeling very much isolated and frustrated. So you know, uh, we cannot see the goal. You know, where is uh, our you know solution and what would be the outcome of the Olympics game? So I think a lot of people are still feeling very uncertain and very much frustrated. So it's a very strange and ambivalent uh, situation in Tokyo under state of emergency. So people, you know, cannot feel we are engaged in the Olympics to, you know, re uh, to restoring our economy. No, I think now that the situation is very much strange and ambivalent. Yoshikazu, we have seen uh, protests take place outside the stadium against these games going ahead. We've uh, heard of those polls that I've been talking about where up to 70% of the Japanese people are opposed to the games being uh, held at this time. Uh, but, you know, Dick Pound just told us just now about the extreme precautions that have been taken by the International Olympic Committee to make sure uh, that these games are very, very safe. Uh, the Japanese people clearly are not assured by that. Uh, I do not think uh, we are convinced uh, this is a safe Olympics game. You know, so we are asking the government, you know, where is your priority? Uh, if you say that safety is our, our priority to hold Olympics successfully, but I, I do not think, you know, the government is convincing uh, us. So, uh, you know, of course, the Japanese people are, you know, doing well. I think, you know, they are wearing masks and, of course, low vaccination, but we are, you know, uh, we are not going outside. Uh, we are you know, not allowed to drink alcohol in the shop. Uh, you know, so anyway, uh, we are doing a lot for the government uh, to ensure the safe uh, Olympics game. Uh, but you know, where's safety? Where's their priority? I, I do not think we are convinced by the government. But you know, it's beginning already. So no way uh, we have to do you know, what we can do. Right. Aina Tangen, uh, the next games, the winter games, will be held in China. Uh, that will be in February. That's just seven months away. Um, so China must be watching these games very closely, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, but the, the issues are slightly different. In Japan, uh, the, the real issue is uh, the, the slow vaccination. I think there would be higher confidence uh, if they had uh, reached that point. There's also budgetary issues, some uh, issues about Holocaust jokes, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to balance that. On the other side, you know, the Olympics are an event that is supposed to pull the world together. And unfortunately, he here's a symbol of how the world is not coming together. I think there should be a little bit more support uh, for this. Uh, and despite everything, uh, this should be a symbol of, of what the world should be like and pulling it together. Uh, in terms of China, they don't have the same issues with budget. Uh, they haven't had any massive PR issues now other than something about a song or something like that. Um, but there's concerns about weather. Obviously, uh, COVID-19, China, by that time, will be at uh, beyond herd immunity. I think they'll be around 85%. Uh, in terms of people in the stands, it's probable that they, if, if necessary, the stands could be filled uh, with Chinese citizens who would be glad to witness such an event. But the main issue right now is this idea of boycotting. You already have the uh, non-binding resolution uh, in the EU saying that their diplomats should not attend. Uh, you have Nancy Pelosi proposing, uh, in essence, the same thing in the United States. Um, the geopolitical issues are spilling over into what should be a symbol of how the world can come together. Right, but getting back to these games, Aina, uh, you say the world is not pulling together. What leads you to believe that? Well, I mean, all, all of the uh, sniping and things like this, I mean, it's, it's partly the government's fault, I think, because, uh, as the spokesman from Suntory said, this was not the opportune time given the only 20 percent vaccination things. But there have been, um, you know, countries have pulled out. Obviously, they're concerned about the safety of the individuals, I mean, of their athletes. But it's more about perceptions, unfortunately. I mean, I think uh, if you look at the metrics that the Olympic Committee put out, it was very clear that they're doing a little bit better than they expected. Uh, so it wasn't a situation where people are, uh, quote, surprised by this, yet you do see people kind of uh, going sideways. It's understandable from a domestic politics point of view, but from uh, a world that badly needs to come together on yeah. so many issues, uh, especially climate, et cetera, this is not a good sign. Okay, Dick Pound, I want to get a quick response from you on what we've just heard, and then I want to get to Lisa. But Dick Pound, uh, give me a response, please. Well, I think something that, that should be remembered is, is that there are 205 different countries 
who have sent uh, their teams to uh, Tokyo. The only country that has pulled out is the DPRK, and that, uh, uh, while it's, it's stated to have been because of COVID, uh, one never one never knows. Um, I, my my uh, concern was was the uh, the public health authorities and and, uh, and and their view on all of this. Uh, we had a presentation by the Director General of uh, the World Health Organization at our IOC session, and he certainly described the, the difficulties that, that exist on a global basis. But in, in the sense of uh, the games here, uh, he said, uh, you know, the IOC and the Olympic movement and the organizers have done uh, what they need to do, uh, and that uh, if, if we do the the normal things that, that actually work and, and prevent the, the spread of the, the virus, the, the, the masks, the social distancing, the, the, the personal hygiene and so forth, that does control uh, the, the, the virus and, and we just need to keep uh, doing that. Right. I must say, coming back from the opening ceremony, uh -huh. uh, the streets of Tokyo were filled with young people. Uh, out uh, on a you know on a Friday night as it was or early Saturday morning, and uh, Japanese sport has continued, uh, professional and otherwise. So it, it's clear that that, that 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 perhaps there's a, a perceived emergency in in Japan, but right. but relative to the rest of the world, it's actually quite minor. Lisa, uh, great to have you with us. Welcome to the show. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, when we look at what's going on right now, clearly there are arguments on both sides of this divide on whether the game should have gone ahead. But how, how important was it to hold these games, albeit in the midst of a pandemic? Over my 19 years of studying the or 19 Olympic Games, um, the Olympics have always been a target and, and a lot of criticism around it. And it heightens leading up to the Olympic Games. But you know, as um, Mr. Pound said, you know, the, the Japanese are out, they're excited. Um, yes, there's still going to be the naysayers and those that are concerned, but I really hope that the people will rally around the athletes that have given, you know, so much of uh, their life to training and preparing for this moment. And, you know, in terms of it's so unfortunate for the, uh, for Tokyo and for Japan, because these games were positioned to have the most foreign visitors. Everybody was so excited to come um, to Japan and to the Tokyo Olympics. But I really think that through the broadcast and if, if Japan positions itself right with these beautiful venues, they can offer Olympic tours afterwards and they can still um, reap the benefits afterwards. And Lisa, what about the economics of holding the Olympic Games? I mean, we've seen countries, cities in the past, go into deep debt to uh, host these games. I mean, do the benefits really outweigh the costs? It need, you know, everybody needs to understand that it's really up to the host city how much they invest. And so, like, Los Angeles is reusing existing facilities. Sochi, on the, on the other hand, you know, built an entire new ski resort. It's like building Bell Ski Resort. So yes, that is going to cost a lot of money. And, you know, uh, Beijing is building their ski industry out as well, their winter sports industry. So it's going to cost more than other host cities. And I also believe that these venues that they're building, they don't last for 16 days. They last for up to 50 years or more. Right. Same thing with the improvements in the airports. So you should amortize those costs over all those years. But a lot of people just like to amortize them over the 16 days of the Olympic Games, and that, to me, is not correct. Yoshikazu Kotu, uh, there was a study done by Oxford University that found that uh, every Olympics that's been held since 1960 is overspent by an average of 172%. And we look at the figures for, for these games, the, the, the amount to host the games, uh, started out at $7.5 billion. That was in 2013, but they ended up at $12.6 billion. Um, what do you make of Lisa's point that there is a residual benefit for hosting the games? I mean, is it or is it not a bad deal for cities? Uh, oh, very obviously, you know, if the government for, for Japan, you know, relatively declining economy, 
uh, if we hold Olympics game, you know, uh, it's a very, you know, multidimensional uh, effects could be expected. For example, you know, we are, the government invests uh, for infrastructure and some, you know, companies uh, to engage in this infrastructure and most importantly, the domestic consumption. You know, if, you know, we can, uh, we hold Olympics game, you know, a lot of the Japanese citizens uh, as well as foreigners uh, come to Tokyo and, you know, consume. And, you know, for, for example, sports bar or, you know, the restaurants or, you know, hotels, you know, a lot of consumption could be expected. But, you know, now and we are holding Olympics game without audience and the Japanese citizens, you know, we are not allowed to go outside and drink alcohol uh, with watching games. So, you know, under this circumstance, this is a very special situation, you know, compared to, you know, previous Olympics games. So, you know, I, I do not think it is, you know, good to be, you know, compared with previous you know, Olympics game because this is the Olympics under the pandemic. Very, you know, very, in, very isolated case over the human history. So, you know, I think, I do not think, you know, Japan's economy could be, you know, restored or you know, driven by the pandemic situation nowadays. Ina Tang, and of course, China has hosted the Olympic Games before. And I want to get back to that quote that was made by the CEO of Suntory, in which he said the games are losing their value. Um, what has China's experience been? I mean, have there been any regrets in China? No, uh, largely. I mean, the 2008 uh, Olympics was a big turning point for uh, China. It was kind of a, uh, an arrival moment, uh, showcasing what China had to offer. And uh, since that time, uh, despite the pandemics and, and the uh, financial crisis and things like that, China has gone forward. Um, it's very different, though, when you're talking about a capital of 1.4 billion people, which is the second largest nominal uh, economic country, uh, power in the world, um, and, you know, other smaller nations which are trying to foot this bill. I mean, China can amortize these, uh, these improvements over a period of time. Having said that, you know, it's clear that the, uh, there are concerns, uh, not only among advertisers, but uh, everybody, that the Olympics is coming about becoming about too much money and uh, that the the spirit of the Olympics the competition can sometimes be lost in the desire to maximize uh, revenues I mean obviously I, I think people are aware that uh, uh, Japan is going to take a massive hit because a lot of their revenues were supposed to come from the turnstiles from tickets going into these venues and also the uh, the ancillary things with uh, hospitality lodging and travel that's not going to happen so uh, this, you know, it's going to be a very tough situation. Uh, the latest estimates of, in terms of Japan has said that it's, it's over 15 billion, and government auditors are saying that it could be well above 25 billion, which would represent somewhere towards four times the original budget. Uh, having said that, um, you know, if it, this is the worst case scenario in terms of, you know, everything bad has happened. To Japan, and I, I don't think it's fair to uh, isolate them in this particular instance for all the sins that may be uh, part of how the Olympics are being held and uh, what they mean. Dick Pan, is that valid criticism that the Olympics has become too much about money? Uh, the IOC did produce a report some years ago in which it was looking at cutting the costs of hosting the Olympic Games. Uh, to make it more attractive for smaller countries, particularly developing countries, to host the games as well. Uh, what, what has the experience been? Well, I think we've been able to, to produce uh, ideas that, that uh, do uh, reduce the costs, and, and uh, there are lots of examples of, of that. But one of the things you have to be careful about is that if, if you have all the facilities in place and you don't have to build anything new, you can host the games without affecting the tax base of the host country, just from television revenues, marketing, uh, and uh, and ticket sales. You can you can pay for the games out of that. The, your 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 audiences uh, pay for that. Where the investment comes in, and and lazy accounting simply lumps it in, as Lisa just said, uh, all together as the, the cost of the Olympics, um, when in fact uh, you, you've got capital assets in place that are, that, that are in A, investments and not costs, and B, will be there for a half a century or more. So the, the, the accounting is, 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 is more sophisticated than, than it should be. And even 
if you were to put all of this against the, the two-week period here in Japan, you're talking about 0.1% of the, the gross national product. I mean, it's right. they're, they're big numbers, but 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 in in relation to the uh, the economy as a whole, it's it's a rounding error. Lisa. Um... Professor Jules Boykoff, who is a professor at uh, Pacific University in Oregon, uh, he's written four books on the Olympics. He had a piece in the Washington Post not so long ago, uh, and he talks about five myths about the Olympics, and I'll run through them really quickly. Ha ha myth number one, host cities make money, cities are eager to host the games, the games make athletes rich, Olympians have a right to free expression at the games, and the Tokyo games will be safe from the coronavirus. What do you make of that? Okay, so this, as I mentioned before, the host city may not make money, but they should look at it from a long-term perspective. And the IOC has changed the way they select cities and the cities have to come and work with the IOC on how these Olympic games will benefit the city in the long run. And it has to be part of the city's long-term plan. And so, Yes, it doesn't make money from those 16 days, right. but I do want to make a point that the the biggest revenue for the Tokyo Olympic Games was uh, domestic sponsors and then broadcast. Right. So the, the ticketing portion was not the largest portion of their revenue, just to clarify that. Uh -huh. um, in terms of athletes not making money, Olympic athletes have never made money, yeah, and they sure. do it not so much for the paycheck at the end, but for their passion right. about their sport. So um, in terms of athletes' freedom of expression, the IOC is looking at it. Uh, the reason why they have Rule 50 is to uh, protect the field of play right. and to keep the focus on the athletes. So if you have, you know, a, a gold medalist up there and then a bronze medalist starts doing some propaganda, yeah. It really takes the, you know, the celebration off of that other athlete. So, like, to keep it fair, and there are ways. The athletes have the opportunity to go speak to the media all they want. They have the uh, opportunity to express themselves on their social media, their other platforms. Uh, okay, Dick Pound, really quickly, I've got 10 seconds. Give me one or two of the big names we should be watching out at these games. <laughs> Well, you mean out of the eleven thousand? Yeah. I, I, I think the the, the competitions in in uh, track and field, as we call it in North America, okay, uh, and swimming will be uh, extraordinary. And the team sports are already off to some some pretty exciting starts. Right. Uh, softball is going. So I think when you have the chance to watch the best athletes in in okay. every sport. That's, that's the excitement of the Olympic Games. Okay, great. Uh, we have to end it there. That's uh, it for this edition of The Heat. I'd like to thank all our guests for being with us. I'm Arun Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.